Amid all the raucous celebrations and thoughtful commentary about Barack Obama's victory, there's a little noticed fact. He ran a great campaign, an efficient operation that was planned and plotted and carried out through 18 tumultuous months with guts and elan. It certainly wasn't easy for a little-known state senator, a black man from Illinois via Hawaii and Indonesia, to become a major party's presumptive presidential nominee in just four years. Obama didn't do it alone. David Wright went inside campaign headquarters to see how Barack Obama and a team of mostly young political operatives spun that early Iowa straw into gold. This is our moment. This is our time. Obama's victory is unlikely on all sorts of levels. It's not just that he's black. It's not just that he's young. It's that he faced an opponent who seemed unstoppable, the most powerful brand name in the Democratic Party. If, if Hillary was kind of the, the dominant monopoly, the Microsoft figure in the race, Obama is sort of, you know, the, the, the cutting edge Google. Obama himself made that connection early on, last fall, when he visited the Googleplex in Mountain View. There is something improbable about this gathering. Comparing himself to the company founders, he pitched himself to the one crowd where youth and inexperience is actually seen as a plus. What we shared is a belief in changing the world from the bottom up, not the top down, that a bunch of ordinary people can do extraordinary things. I think when people in Silicon Valley looked at Obama, uh, they saw their type of person. They viewed him as a hot startup company, which he's turned out to be. <laughs> In the parlance of Silicon Valley, Obama was the new, new thing, a fresh brand name who quickly proved his appeal to young people in particular. He was a made-for-YouTube phenomenon, a viral Internet sensation without even having to try. There's something happening in America. A best-selling author and one of Oprah's favorite things. I do believe he's the one to bring us the audacity of hope. The Obama brand quickly leapt into the mainstream. This, believe it or not, is Obama's national campaign headquarters in Chicago. It has the feel of an internet startup. More than the office space seems temporary, functional, as though the young campaign staffers might have to move out at a moment's notice should the next round of venture funding fail to come through. But that's unlikely to be a problem. Hey, Elijah, this interview thing looks fine. Thanks in part to Chris Hughes. Um, At 24, Hughes is a genuine internet tycoon, though you wouldn't necessarily know it to meet him. He's one of the pioneers of online social networking. With his two Harvard roommates, he co-founded Facebook.com, one of the most popular websites in the world. Hughes adapted the Facebook concept for Obama's presidential campaign. The campaign as a social network? Yeah, it is a social network in the sense that people come and build profiles, join groups. People don't just come to Obama's website to read his positions. They could become Obama activists. So here's 25 names of people, and once you click on anyone. A virtual phone bank, for instance. Of course, so I report that, that data directly. His voting. So if I say, you know, he supports Obama, then what happens is we know that he's an Obama supporter so that um, we hopefully can give him yet another call tomorrow to remind him and say, hi, you know, it's time, it's time to go vote. We really need you. We really need you out there. Or to go out and caucus. After all, what is a caucus but a real-time version of social networking? Our ability to create this community on the Internet uh, made us viable in caucuses in a way that other candidates uh, uh, were not, and it was a great uh, key to our success. They said this day would never come. Obama didn't just win the Iowa caucus, he won every caucus, except for Nevada. But even there, he won more delegates than Clinton. The ability to reach people uh, as we have uh, at the grassroots level and bring them to these events or have them bring others to these events uh, made uh, the caucuses uh, really, really valuable. Obama's website also revolutionized campaign fundraising. Other candidates have recognized the Internet's potential, among them Democrat Howard Dean. Hello, hello. Republican Ron Paul. But Obama has taken it to a new level. Over a hundred million dollars online from one, uh, 1.5 million people. 
Lots of small contributions. Okay. Yeah, that's been the engine that's that's uh, driven all of the fundraising um, from uh, from from the beginning. Is everyday people giving, you know, five or ten dollars. People coming back and saying, "Man, this is so real." And giving another twenty or twenty-five dollars, um, and it's those those small donations add up. After Super Tuesday, that gave Obama staying power, whereas Clinton seemed to struggle to keep up. But the Internet is a double-edged sword. It has held the keys to Obama's success. It's also been a source of irritation for him. Not God bless America! God damn America! There are all those nasty sermons from his own former pastor that Obama's had to answer for. There's a black man stealing my show! and clips that have threatened to unravel Obama's efforts to pull the party together. Not to mention all those nasty emails circulating, suggesting falsely that Obama is really a Muslim. The internet helped to make Obama, it could also help to break him. It's a beautiful day. He is a genuine political startup that just went public. Whether his stock continues to rise remains to be seen. I'm David Wright for Nightline in New York.